So with all the talk around Joey Votto, will he get pulled up? Would he not get pulled up? Well, how about a retirement instead? You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. I'm Braden Iwasco. He's Carter First. You can find us on Twitter, Braden Five Iwasco, Carter First Two, as well on Instagram and TikTok at Locked On Blue Jays. And if you're new here on YouTube and you haven't already, we've seen some more of you guys dropping subscribes on YouTube. Uh, but if you're new and you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, also, there's a little bell icon on YouTube somewhere. Uh, hit that. It'll notify you guys whenever we post videos, go live, etc. Uh, so it keeps you guys up to date on the latest Blue Jays information. Um, and then besides that, I mean, wherever, if you're listening everywhere else, we appreciate it. Uh, we, we are still working the Discord. It should be out for tomorrow's episode. Yeah, I am struggling through it, but uh, it's coming along. And I want to make sure that it's nice and it looks good and it all works as it should. But knowing me, it won't be quite, uh, you know, ready to rock by tomorrow. But that's where, fingers crossed, we're hoping for it. Let's get right to it. We got uh, the Jays blew a six-run lead to end the series. That was what it was. We're, we'll talk about it. It was it was an interesting game, to say the least. Of course, we got series preview coming up later on in the show. But the big news of the day, we all discussed everywhere had the same discussion. When will the Toronto Blue Jays pull up Joey Votto? Will the will Joey Votto come up to play the Reds in a big swan song? See you later. Nope. Instead, Joey Votto pulls the plug and retires. A little bit of an interesting decision, but I think, uh, you know, coming off playing the Reds and sort of in the final game, it was a sort of a perfect moment, I think, for Joey Votto to call it quits. Uh, sort of sort of nice to see. A good, a good, good, I mean, Hall of Fame career at the end of the day. Uh, Carter, just before, you know, I sort of throw it to you and you can sort of go off about Joey Votto or give me your thoughts. A uh, little bit of an interesting little tidbit here. So yesterday, TSN reports, when will the Blue Jays pull up Joey Votto in a big story? They wrote a bunch of headlines, blah, blah, blah. And I just found it was just hilarious that coming into today, he retires and TSN puts out this huge article. TSN put one out, uh, I believe the Jays Journal put one out, the score put one out, and (laughs) Buddy retires. Unbelievable. Just that's how this stuff works. I I swear. Um, and and no no shade to throw on anybody because nobody knew what what the situation was going around Joey Votto. There there wasn't a whole lot of conversations to be had. Uh, the media really wasn't let in on a whole bunch as as we've seen. Me and Carter did our speculations of what we thought was sort of gonna happen. Uh, but that's just how sort of this stuff goes. Carter, just on Joey Votto, I mean, let, let's start on the retirement of today. How did you feel about him pulling the plug, or I guess yesterday? How, do you, how did you feel about him pulling the plug yesterday? That, that was the speculation along uh, among a lot of analysts. They were like, hey, is, uh, Joey, Joey Votto is probably going to be eyeing a Cincinnati Reds return, just uh, obviously for uh, just his uh, MLB career, just growing up uh, through the Cincinnati system with them for a very long time, the majority of his career. Then goes to the Toronto Blue Jays wanting to play for Canada after uh, those comments he made. I believe it was in 2017 about Canada. Apologizes for that. Tries to make it back to the Toronto Blue, Toronto Blue Jays. Hits a moon ball off Zach Wheeler in spring training. Like, okay, maybe this guy still has a little bit, a uh, little bit left in the tank. Then you look at Joey Votto and his career with the Toronto Blue Jays in 2024. Zero at bats, zero OPS, zero home runs, zero hits, zero strikeouts. Pretty good stat there. Doesn't make it a one game. Doesn't play one game with the Toronto Blue Jays. All the excitement uh, that we might have had left for the rest of the season, other than the prospects, is just gone. You know, Joey Votto decides to call it in. It's a career. To be fair, I mean, this guy is like 40 years old. I think he, is he 41 or 40? Anyway, he's, he's over 40 years old. Absolutely insane career. Going to be a Hall of Famer. Don't really think that's up for debate. Uh, obviously, unbelievable. Uh, MVP uh, is over his career. Uh, 2,056 games. Absolutely insane. 296 slash line. 409 uh, on base percentage with a 511 
uh, slugging, and then 356 homers with 1,144 RBIs. Unbelievable career. That, that's all you could say. You got to give a guy respect. You got to uh, acknowledge that uh, he just he knew he didn't have it anymore. On his Instagram, he said he's just not good at baseball anymore. Uh, you got to give props to that. Just trying not to uh, just – you know, extend a career that's uh, just long overdue. It, it, he's going out uh, on his own terms, which is nice. You don't have to see the uh, the struggle bus of Joey Votto for an entire year, just uh, getting at bats to get at bats on the Toronto Blue Jays. Nothing bad to say about the guy. Love Joey Votto, uh, one of the best Canadians to ever do it. Just uh, it is unfortunate that you don't get to see him with the Toronto Blue Jays, just considering uh, how the seasons went. But overall, as we said before on this pod- podcast, for the future, it does make sense to play your 25, 24, 26 year olds rather than 40 year old Joey Votto, especially when you're trying to compete for 2025. Yeah, Carter. You know what? We we talk about the 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 sadness for Blue Jays fans of not being able to see him. You know, wear the Maple Leaf on his jersey. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I don't know. I think it's sort of a perfect end. I think Joey Votto. I mean, he even said it himself. Cincinnati. I've only played for you. I love you. And I don't know. It's it's sort of. I think the perfect end to his career of just being a red and that's it i don't know it's you know you don't see it too often anymore where a guy plays his entire career sort of with one team and and i mean that we all sort of expected it for those of you who follow the nhl with steven samkos we all thought he was gonna be a lightning for life and uh turns out not so much so that's not how that's not how things go anymore so in the off chance that it does happen I mean, we're big Canucks guys, Carter, and, the, you know, the Sedins played their entire career with the Vancouver Canucks. It's nice when a guy plays his whole career for one team. I, I think it's a perfect end. He'll retire as a uh, Cincinnati Red as well, most likely. Uh, and it's just, it's the perfect, the perfect end. I think it's the perfect bow. It wraps up his career. And I, I honestly, I think, yes, I would have loved to see him, you know, in the blue, red, and white. But I think at the end of the day, I think it's perfect. Yeah, with the red situation, it's just uh, they weren't going to ex- pick up his option for $20 million this year. It's just like, why would you? It's Joey Votto, very old. Obviously, he has done a ton for that franchise, but it is a business at the end of the day. So uh, you can't just soak $20 million just to have Joey Votto on your team. Even though the uh, Detroit Tigers did sort of do that for Miguel Cabrera, sort of the same situation, two unbelievable hitters that have been with their franchise for a very long time. But I have some stuff from uh, Ben Nicholson Smith just on Joey Votto's time with the Blue Jays. One of them just uh, for his future endeavors. So I got three things I'm just going to quickly go over here. So this is just on Votto and how he wanted to earn his way back in the MLB. He goes on to say, how can I show you that it make it would make my day, my moment? To me, it's disrespectful to the game. I also think it's disrespectful to the play, to the paying fans. I would see a high-end performance. I would have given them an awful performance. So that's just on him trying to work back into the major leagues. He uh, even acknowledged that, obviously, uh, he wasn't having the greatest success in uh, in double-A, in triple-A, in his time in the minor leagues. And that's why he wanted to work his way back. He didn't want it to just be gifted to him just because of uh, his career and what he's done in the past. He wanted to prove to the Toronto Blue Jays fans and just MLB fans in general that he was good enough to play in the MLB. Fortunately, it didn't work out the way he did, but uh, huge props to him for just uh, – having the wherewithal and uh, just the perception on himself that uh, he can go out and say that, uh, yeah, like he, his time is done. Like he had a great career, but it just, uh, it wasn't in the cards at, the, at that point. And uh, another thing I got here, uh, just, yeah, he follows up, just says he wasn't getting the results. He wasn't in triple A. He was awful. And in quotes, I was awful down there again, just uh, having some self-awareness. And this is the last one I got. It's just on Joey Votto's future. So obviously, uh, he he could have multiple different futures. Could go into broadcasting. Could go into coaching. Joey Votto. It's his his career around baseball probably is not done, but this is just for the imminent future. So he goes on obviously with Joey Votto. What is uh, what does the future hold in store for you? And Joey Votto just said, "I'm not regretful, but I'm genuinely sad. I wanted to play a year for the Toronto Blue Jays in front of my family, in front of my country. Toronto Blue Jays fans. I desperately want to participate in games here." But saying that, uh, probably book a yoga class, probably wake up at 7 or 8, go for a walk, and uh, take it from there. That's what he says. So, uh, props Joey Votto. Just uh, class act. You'll have to see it. Uh, other than those Canadian comments, I don't have anything bad to say about Joey Votto. Always such a fun player to watch. It really uh, wore his heart on his sleeve. Uh, a very genuine guy. You know exactly what you're going to get from Joey Votto. I love uh, players that show emotion on the field. What a career from the kid. Just uh, congrats to Joey Votto and happy retirement. Yeah, the kid. I love it. Yeah. Um, no, I, I agree. I think he was a very genuine player. The guy you saw was the guy you got. And I 
you know, with the amount of media training that goes on with all these players and, and, you know, sort of being in the spotlight, probably from when you're a kid, Joey Votto was just wholeheartedly himself the whole time he played the game. I, I remember when I was a kid watching baseball and Joey Votto's out there being Joey Votto, interacting with the fans, you know, messing with people, high-fiving, you know, kids in the crowd. I mean, it's just, I don't know. He, he was something special to the game and, and I think he's going to be missed playing, but like you said, I think there's a lot of opportunities. Very entertaining guy. I think he could go into the broadcasting world in some uh, aspect and, and do fine there. Um, and, you know, he'd have, probably have to – he's one of those guys that you'd have to have like a, like a drop button on once in a while, I think, but uh, or a kill switch. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think he's a very entertaining guy, and I think he could – he's probably going to succeed in whatever he d- decides to do next. I could also see Joey Votto just not doing anything, just – chilling out and just being Joey ball. You'll see him at like Walmart one day or something. That's just sort of the guy I picture. He's just going to, you know, you'll just see him out in the world doing whatever being Joey Votto. Oh, well, uh, when, when you've been on the grind for that long, I mean, if you take a couple of years off, can't really blame the guy. I mean, uh, I, I feel like a lot of fans, uh, a lot of people just watch the game of baseball. We're not complaining to be in uh, his position. Obviously a lot of people out there do have it harder than Joey Votto does obviously, but uh if you're not good at baseball for that long a period of time, you deserve to uh, enjoy your retirement. But uh, I just wanted to, the last thing I wanted to go into about uh, Joey Votto is just the most Joey Votto way to retire of all time, just outside of the Bison Stadium, just in AAA. Yes, like, yeah, I'm done. That's it for me, guys. I'm not. It's going to be our last game. Realized I wasn't going to play against the Cincinnati Reds, and he's just like pulling the plug. No, I'm done. I don't care. Just wanted my a uh, little bit of revenge against my old team. And yeah, he that's because that's how he joined the Toronto Blue Jays in a sense, too. It's just nobody would kind of was talking about Joey Votto at all. It seemed like he might retire this offseason. All of a sudden, he's like, man, I just I feel like I want to play baseball right now. And then he started talking about the Toronto Blue Jays. I think the Toronto Blue Jays get in communication with him. And then three days after his initial tweet, he is a Toronto Blue Jay. Obviously, you don't see him with the actual team, but uh, just going to be interesting like 10 years down the road. It's going to be like Joey Votto in a Toronto Blue Jays jersey. And pe- people might be like, damn, that's like a really good edit. That actually looks so real. And believe it or not, Joey Votto was actually here for uh, a little bit of 2024. I, d- I just wish we got one Joey Votto game. I-, I would pay a lot for a Joey Votto game. Didn't get it. A little bit disappointed. But uh, you know what? It is what it is. We're, uh, we look forward to 2025 and uh, we continue to get younger, I guess, uh, with the Toronto Blue Jays organization. Yeah, man. And, and you know, sort of a couple a uh, couple other th- crazy sort of things here. Uh, Joey Votto on his way to the stadium. Uh, he, he said, uh, driving to the stadium right now, my Uber driver asks, are you a player? And he said, no. And he's, you know, I think that's such a Joey Votto answer to your Uber driver, your Joey that. Votto. And your answer is the first day into retirement. No, I think it's just, uh, it's just hilarious to me. Um, also a sort of a cool stat here. So, um, Votto was among baseball's most productive offensive players following his debut in 2007. He ranked second to Mike Trout in uh, war with a 58.8 among position players from 2007 to 2023. I think that's an incredible stat. And I think, you know, as Canadians, sometimes I, you know, you don't hear about us a lot. Right. And, um, when somebody does great, it's it's sort of like a, a bolster to the whole country. And uh, so huge hat tip, give him his flowers, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Joey Votto was an absolute stud and uh, all the respect coming from uh, me and you. Um, but Carter, we do have a game to break down. I know we could probably go on with our Joey Votto stories. If, if you, you know, we could we could bring up playing playing, you know, as Joey Votto in, you know, MLB, whatever it was, 2007 or 2008. Uh, on the Wii, I think, but, uh, you know, there's, there's so many stories, but at, at some point it's like, all right, the guys are tired. Now let's talk about the team that's actually on the field. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back and we'll talk about sort of the craziness that was yesterday's baseball game. So today's episode, new one for you guys. Today's episode brought to you by Tonal. Tonal is for those of us who thrive on getting stuff done, including workouts, every minute counts. That's why you need Tonal, the smart strength training system that takes the guesswork out of working out so you can make sure you're making the most every rep. Now, let me tell you guys, this is one of those places that I just need. I feel like I'm so busy all the time. I don't have, I don't I don't have time. I don't want to just sit down and plan out a workout. I want something that's just there ready. I can just get to the gym, get to doing what I'm doing. And it's the best. Tonal is the world's 
smartest and most effective strength training system that helps you get stronger. Powered by AI, Tonal learns with every rep so it can deliver workouts personalized just for you. Tonal learns from your movement and provides suggested weight recommendations for every move with detailed progress reports. They could even create personalized programs and workout suggestions or recommendations based on your individual goals. Right now, Tonal is offering our listeners $200 off your Tonal purchase with promo code locked on MLB. That's tonal.com and use promo code locked on MLB for $200 off your purchase. That's tonal.com, promo code locked on MLB. Again, $200 off. I mean, $200 off anything I ain't passed on up. Make sure you guys click that link and uh, go check it out. So, Carter, lots to get into from the baseball game yesterday. But there's one thing I think I have to start off by saying because uh, you don't get to say it too often. David Schneider got a hit. That's it. That's all I need to do. End the podcast. That's all I care about. No, the guy needs to still be better. The at are not looking good still. It was great to see him get a hit, but I mean, there was 10 in the game. So uh, almost everybody did get a hit besides uh, Wagner, Kirk, and, uh, or I guess Kirk didn't actually get a uh, at bat, but Wagner and Barger were the only two guys not to get a hit on this baseball team today. So uh, it, the boys look good in the first few innings, Carter, and then it just, whoo, did it come crumbling down. Yeah, you're up six nothing. You expect to win a baseball game. This flat out gonna say that they they don't win a baseball game. <laughs> All eleven runs. Uh, just well, take me back to uh, the first three innings of this game. You're up six nothing. Ernie Clement just hits another moon ball. I'm feeling good. You know, where it's like a ton of runs. The Toronto Blue Jays in a short amount of time. You have literally sixteen runs in twelve innings. And I'm like, okay, something I can get used to. And then Yariel gets hit around a little bit. Brendan Little comes in. Ellie De, La, Ellie De La Cruz does Ellie De La Cruz things, just stealing every single base, gets to 60 bases on the, the season, which is absolutely nuts. But uh, quickly just going into David Schneider, unfortunate uh, ricochet shot to him. Not really because he brought him up. But over his last 15 games, it's three for 44. Oh, uh, six, eight average, slugging a .91. Like that's, that is really bad, unfortunately. <laughs> over those 44 at-bats, 22 strikeouts. Some of the worst baseball that I've seen Dave Schneider play, unfortunately. Really hoping for a turnaround here. But it's, again, you look at today's game, high fastball, high outside fastball, just not even close. This is like 92 getting blown by him. It's it's something that he's desperately going to need to address in the offseason. Hopefully before the offseason comes. But, uh, yeah, you're, you're going to need a, a little bit of switch in that uh, approach or something, Dave Schneider. Because, yeah, it's unfortunately not going too well for you. But uh, other than that, George Springer, another home run. You absolutely love to see it. A guy that's kind of been inconsistent, I'd say, after the All-Star break, had a Linsanity run for two, three weeks where he was one of the best players it seemed like to ever do it. And then now it's cooled off a little bit again, starting to pick it up over the last few games. But, uh, yeah, like, it's overall, Yariel Rodriguez, not the greatest day you want. Again, when you go over the starting pitching, we always say there's three pitchers we're not necessarily worried about. The Baton Francis starts and the Yariel Rodriguez starts are the starts that we want to go well. Not not that good again today from Yariel Rodriguez. I'll quickly go over his stat line here. Four and a third innings, six hits, five earned runs, six strikeouts, two walks, uh, gave up a home run. Just, yeah, not, not great. The Cincinnati Reds team isn't amazing. They're not terrible offensively. But, again, you're going to have to face better teams. You're going to have to face better lineups. But, again, it's, it's one start in a 162-game season at this point. Again, you want to see success, but it's not going to kill you if you see Yario Rodriguez have a blow-up game. But that's been uh, the one fault he's had is his consistency. He'll go out there and throw six innings, one run ball, and then he'll go out and kind of throw a stinker like this that uh, puts you in a bad spot to uh, finish out the game. But, Brayden, uh, what, what did you see from this game, just overall, from whether it's Yario Rodriguez, whether it's the offense, just anything that uh, stuck out to you? I, I My thing with Yario Rodriguez, I'll start there. Um is the fact that what what I notice is he gives up a walk because he can't he's not locating his pitches. Then he tries to get back into the zone by just getting whatever he can over the plate. And then when that happens, he gets blown up. And and I've seen that over the past few starts with Yariel is he walks a guy or a couple guys, and then it's like I'm just gonna pepper the zone and I don't really care where it is in the zone as long as it's a strike. And then it ends up being a middle middle pitch and it gets you know nuked. Um, so that's what my concern is with the Ariel. I think he gets very flustered as soon as he gets, gives the walk away, uh, and then tries to like battle back with one at bat for some reason. And then of course gets knocked around a little bit. So I don't love seeing that from Ariel Rodriguez. I think that's more of a, 
learning process for him in his first season in the MLB. I think he, he will be able to like sort of learn from that, learn to calm his emotions and uh, get back to pitching how he was instead of focusing on, I have to now get this out because I just walked somebody. Uh, Eric Swanson, I mean, a third innings, he gives up three runs. It's not what you want to see from him, even though I think he's been very, very solid over the past bunch of outings he's been in. Just a tough day all around, I think. Um, George Springer, I, I don't know if you mentioned, I can't remember if you mentioned this, but uh, three home runs in his last two games. Pretty pretty uh, elite stat line Definitely there. take that for sure. Not, yeah. Not um, over here. But you're right. A guy that's been a little bit up and down sort of since the all-star break. And he, I mean, he was terrible before the all-star break. So, I mean, you'll take, you'll take exactly what he's giving you for sure. Um, everybody else. I mean, I don't know. I, it was pretty, it's, it's, it's sort of a weird stat line because I was very happy with what the team did, uh, you know, in getting the six runs. And it's just, again, my whole thing is you have a couple big innings and, and you expect them to be able to keep adding on. You know, in the first three innings, they get their six runs and then don't add on again until the ninth inning. Like maybe, you know, if they could have got one or two runs, I don't, maybe it doesn't change the uh, outlook of this game. Um, but it probably makes you feel a little bit better instead of feeling like you, you, you know, you reached the top of the mountain and then just fell off the other side. And that's sort of how this game felt a little bit. Um, obviously, the bullpen just did a terrible job. But I mean, that with, with such a depleted pen as is, I, I think we, we all have to understand that that's going to happen here and there where this bullpen isn't elite. And I think we all know that. So I think we have to expect this more than we are right now is what I'll say. Overall, I mean, again, this game, it doesn't matter. It's probably, I hate to say it better that they lose this. I'll say sort of a quick thing here. Uh, I was with Ross Levitan today at work, uh, host of Locked On Senators. And uh, he did sort of a draft simulator to see who would get what pick and uh he hit it once in the first uh team that got the, the first pick was the toronto blue jays so hopefully fingers crossed that we get that pick and you know we can get uh, jackson holiday's brother there um but we'll have to see what happens i, I again i i don't want to i don't want to look too far into the future um but these wins don't mean anything these losses don't mean anything um i will never pray that this team loses but i don't necessarily believe it's the worst thing to happen right now yeah, just looking at this quickly, it's it's looking like the Toronto Blue Jays have the sixth best odds to get uh, the first round pick or first overall pick, I should say. Uh, it, what a turnaround that would be. Just uh, the Toronto Blue Jays going from a team that's supposed to compete in 2024, some would say World Series aspirations, to, oh, look at that, the Toronto Blue Jays get the first overall pick in 2025. Would be absolutely insane. Um, but saying that, would you would you be okay with all this? Say uh, it comes out that it, you get Ethan Holiday, obviously, from the draft. He comes out, looks amazing. It looks like the superstar that uh, he's projected to be. Some of these prospects, Will Wagner, Joey Lopravito, have uh, immediate impacts in 2025. Are you are you taking this lost season for uh, a Toronto Blue Jays play, playoff spot in 2025? Or are you kind of just like, I want to see a run. I want to see some sort of, uh, just even a playoff win for this to be successful. But uh, would you be okay with Toronto Blue Jays absolutely just falling off the cliff for the rest of the season if that meant getting uh, the first overall pick in this upcoming draft? Uh, yeah. I think that's an easy answer. I, I think this season's gone as it is for them to win 15 out of whatever, or 20 of their last, how many ever game? I, why? Why? I, I don't, I hate watching them lose, but I think if it puts you in a better position to get the draft pick and Ethan holiday is this superstar that he's projected to be. I, I think you take that with how your pipeline is looking now. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the other option is. Is like, no, I just want them to win every possible game so that, you know, they make the playoffs. Playoff run. Yeah. 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 Playoff run. Yeah. Yeah. What a joke. Uh, no, I don't know. I, I don't. I, you guys can tell me what you think. Like, I, I know some people absolutely hate hearing people say that they want to tank. And I'm not saying that we necessarily have to tank. I just am not upset about them losing games at this point i don't think winning games if helps you i don't think i don't think trying getting upset about losses anymore is affecting anybody so at the end of the day no i'd be i'd be more than happy with getting the first overall pick well yeah other than uh the first overall pick uh well i guess from watch which we're already on which is <laughs> just insane uh for 2024 but other than that like just looking at the toronto blue jays like offensively for me, I'm not, there's not a lot for me to get excited about right now. Unfortunately, like you're looking at George Springer, like am I, how confident am I on this guy leading off the Toronto Blue Jays next year? 
Uh, I got, I don't know. Like it's, it's going to be a lot to see for the rest of the season. You could get first uh, three months of George Springer, or you can get George Springer now, even right now, it's not the greatest George Springer you've ever seen. You got to expect him to regress a little bit next season. Obviously you're excited to see Vladdy. Dalton Barsh is another guy that I don't know if I want him hitting in the two spot necessarily. Bernie Clement, I'm just all the way in on. Again, if you, this guy, worst case, is going to be a utility man off the bench, I think would be unbelievable from that spot. I think you're getting a lot from Ernie Clement if he's just uh, your first bench bat. It's going over again, giving him his flowers once again on this podcast. Definitely a big Ernie Clement guy. But going over his last 15 games, I think 295 with a 328 OP, or sorry, a 328 OBP and a 492 uh, slugging percentage. Let's see if I can do some quick math here. That is over an 820 OPS over the last 15 games. Definitely a, a, something I'm taking because you look at the rest of this offense. Like, again, averages don't mean everything, but you look at averages, you want your guys to get on base. You got you want your guys to get hits. You're going through this lineup. There's there's not a lot of guys that are, are getting on, oh, even looking at on base percentage, getting on base at a good clip here. Like, you look at Asin Barcher is 202 on base. David Schneider's at 291 with a 200 average. Brian Servan, not going to include in this for obvious reasons. Will Wagner, uh, small sample size, but hitting 417, 440 uh, on base. That, unfortunately, is only going to go down. Don't think uh, Will Wagner is going to hit 417 for the rest of his MLB career. Would love to be proven wrong, though. Uh, Will Wagner, you want to do that to me? Uh, I'll hand up. I'll definitely take that one on the chin. But, look, like, Leo Menez, that's a guy that, again, you can see having a utility role as well. Wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable throwing him out as my starting shortstop. So we're trying to use this uh, little last gap of the season here after the All-Star break to evaluate players. Again, we still have some time. We still have about 35 games left to uh, let these guys kind of rumble and figure out their spot in uh, in the MLB. But offensively, like you're not, I'm not getting super excited about anything. Again, there's a lot to do in free agency. But uh, right now, just uh, with Joey Votto now, uh, we're, we lost that expectation. Uh, we're, we're seeing a little bit of power now from uh, guys like George Springer, Ernie Clement. But overall, offensively, not necessarily turning the needle. We can go over to starting pitching. Starting to pitching is definitely the one I'm like the most okay with going into next season. Bullpen, there's a lot of questions. We will answer these a ton, obviously, as we go through the season. But Braden, over, overall offensively, just how are you feeling like about this Toronto Blue Jays team? Obviously, they've hit uh, for more power, have scored more runs. But you think this can be a consistent thing going into 2025? I don't know. I, I, I hate to say that, but I don't know. I don't know. Um the, the, the thing that I'm liking is, is that we have seen more consistency as of late. Um, and, and a lot of these guys, right, that weren't in the lineup in this year. And there was a lot of flip-flopping between guys early this season. And no team can run well when it's like that. I think now watching some of these guys get more consistent at bats, you're seeing now more of what they can do. Ernie Clement is a great guy for that. I, I was about to say right before you sort of went into it was that I fully believe that Ernie Clement would is could be a solid number one, number two hitter for this team moving into next year. I think there's a spot for him on this team right now, um, and, and they're going to have to decide what they want to do with him. But that's a guy that I'm pretty excited about and seeing that if he can keep the consistency going um, with this uh, consistent playing time. I, I'll be pretty happy with if I see him in the one or two spot next year. Um, we'll have to see. Again, it depends on offseason moves and what happens. And I think there has to be moves made and there has to be acquisitions made. Um, but we'll get, of course, like you said, more into that. We're going to, Carter, I know we got to take a quick break. We're going to preview the series coming up. And uh, yeah, whatever else sort of news and topics we have here for you yeah, guys. I, here, I'm just going to say one more thing. What yeah, go for it. And then, yeah, sure. we'll take it into this uh, third segment here. And then uh, I'll, I'll give Sully the shout out first, obviously. Uh, thank you for making us your first listen. But obviously, Locked On MLB would be a great choice for your second listen. Uh, Sully does Locked On MLB, obviously following the storylines throughout Major League Baseball with a lot of uh, – Wild card spots, lots of claims and division leaders. Obviously, in the AL East, going to come down to the wire with the Yankees and the Orioles. Be a perfect opportunity to check that out after, obviously, you listen to all of our podcasts. But the last thing about Ernie Clement that I do want to say is, obviously, yes, has been one of the best hitters on the Toronto Blue Chase this season. But looking at 2025, if you want to be a playoff contending team, if you even want, well, I don't know if we can even say this yet because where we're at right now, where this team's looking, World Series contenders for 2025, is Ernie Clement hitting one or two for this baseball team going to put you there? Not necessarily. I think, uh, obviously, I think you're on the same page as well. But what, what we have right now for Toronto Blue Jays, Ernie Clement actually looks like he might be hitting one or two next season for uh, the consistency 
for what he's given you at the plate. Because other than that, you look at a guy like Spencer Horowitz could be your next option. Bo Bichette, if he plays. There's so many question marks on this team. But for me, if you're going into next season with Ernie Clement, at either leading off or in that second spot, you're probably going to have a very limited offensive season as of uh, from a power standpoint and just uh, run scoring in total. But uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I got from uh, this game. You go up six nothing, you, you've got to win the baseball game. Good thing the games don't really matter right now. And in the long, grand scheme of things, it is better for the Toronto Blue Jays, Blue Jays to lose. Because so I was emotionally invested, still in the Toronto Blue Jays winning and losing baseball games. This one, this one might have put me over the edge, unfortunately. Yeah, dude, I'm with you. It was uh, it was a painful one to watch for sure. Still, sort of a fun game. It's nice to see them score runs. It just sucks that they had to give up so many as well anyway guys we'll take a quick break uh and then we'll be right back to give you guys a series preview get supplies from the site that's made for skilled trades supplyhouse.com supplyhouse.com is the most reliable way to order plumbing hvac and electrical products online their easy to use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need help with an order? Get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person every time. Pros in the skilled trades can help you get a competitive edge by joining SupplyHouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to a dedicated full line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. So you can join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at supplyhouse.com slash TM and order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com. Today's episode also brought to you by Game Time. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of Game Time. You know, with their flash deals, zone deals, they have so many discounts that you guys can take advantage of going uh you know to games events concerts whatever it is game time is the place to get your tickets i'm telling you the view from your seat option i know i rave about this it's just because it's so awesome i i love being able to go to the ballpark and knowing what my view is going to be and what my seat looks like and you know what kind of view i'll get will it be the outfield am i in a weird corner of the ballpark i i just i hate i, I hate doing that i love knowing knowing what i'm getting when i purchase tickets and game time is perfect for that uh, they, like I said, they also have uh, the, the, you know, uh, lowest price guarantee. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference if they don't. Take the guesswork out of buying t- uh, concert tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first, first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N M L B for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So, guys, as you know, we have a series to preview here as we sort of move in, stay in. I don't know what you want to call it, the dog days of summer. Um, Carter, I don't know, man. Just I guess I guess taking as a, as a large picture here, I know going into the new uh, sort of series, going into the end of the season, how are you just feeling overall? Like, like are you getting like a little bit? All right, wrap it up. It's it's getting tired. I'm getting tired of watching garbage baseball or or are you sort of with me in the sense of I'm just now it's I'm getting to that point and where it's like I know the summer's coming to an end and I just want to like enjoy baseball where where do you sort of fit on that this is a tough question to answer I'll be honest because uh it's sometimes I'm not, I'm not gonna say it's the easiest thing to watch Toronto Blue Jays baseball right now especially uh where, where we're at with the games not meaning anything it's a whole, whole lot uh, of fun watching meaningful baseball games games that actually you know like you win a game and you feel good after you lose a game you feel anything after like even that disappointment uh just with the toronto blue jays being 59 68 uh only 12 teams back of a wild card spot if you guys are still following along there but uh <laughs> yeah uh it's again you like i gotta think about it from this perspective you go to november you go to december january whatever you think oh there's no baseball on at all and this sucks like right now there's something to watch every single day which is awesome you get toronto blue jays pretty much every day uh, obviously you got like this year for sports is nice, but like in terms of Toronto Blue Jays baseball, uh, I'm 50, 50 on it. Like if, there, if games to like, maybe we get two games on a day off, if that's how we were running it, I, this would be perfect to be like best case scenario. I can commit two days to my, of my emotional well-being to the Toronto Blue Jays again, not nearly as invested in it as I was before. 
But I still, again, I'm not going to bet against the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm not going to hate that they're playing baseball, even though it's not a great brand of baseball and they're losing series to the Cincinnati Reds. But uh, yeah, I, I can't say that I wouldn't want to see a better Toronto Blue Jays game or P- Toronto Blue Jays team play, uh, play out there. But I- I'm 50-50 on it. Some games are uh, easier than others to watch, obviously, but I'm definitely not going to complain about having baseball on right now. Yeah, for sure. And, and I guess, you know, going on to that, there's a Angels series, four-game series to carry us through the weekend. So who's excited for that? Please raise a hand. Raise your hand if you are. I, I need to see. Nobody? Okay, cool. Yeah, me neither. This series means nothing. I, I can't stand that this is a four-game series right now because it just seems like four games of sort of garbage baseball. Um, and I don't know. I, I think to, I think it's a good weekend to have our baseball playoffs, Carter, because, uh, you know, maybe we'll have a couple beers. We'll go back to uh, your place or my place uh, in town, and we'll just throw on the game as a little bit of background because, uh, you know, we'll be, you know, in and out of baseball games. So, I don't know. Whatever. It's an Angel series. It's four games. Uh, Thursday, uh, today's game, Bassett versus Canning. Uh, Friday's game is Bowden. We're not sure who he's going up against. Uh, Saturday, it's Gosman versus Fulmer. And then Sunday is Jose Brios versus Anderson, which actually should be like sort of a heavyweight tilt a little bit. Um, or there, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Again, it's I, at this point, I don't even know what to say. I, I just started going into the games. And I don't, I, I have my expectations of how I think it should go based on pitching matchups and everything else. But with how the Angels are and how the Blue Jays are doing this season, both of them, I'm sort of just like, I don't really ever know what to expect. It could be a 2 1 game, it could be a 11 7 game. I don't know. Yeah, I, I got like three things to say uh, before we wrap up this episode. So the first one is what I'm going to be looking for from this Los Angeles Angels series. Uh, I'm going to be like Will Wagner this weekend. Obviously, we got our slow pitch playoffs coming up. I'm just going to be smacking the ball around the yard, you know, hit the ball hard, barrel up some baseballs, probably not hitting any bombs, but uh, I'm, I'm going to be whatever, whatever Will Wagner does. I'll be Thursday and Friday games. That's how my weekend's going to go. So I'm putting my money in on uh, Will Wagner. I'd be betting Moores on prize picks if uh, obviously if I had that ad today didn't, uh, unfortunately, but uh, I'm going to be Will Wagner out there this weekend. So we're hopefully, hopefully going to watch some tape uh, Thursday, Friday, and then uh, be ready for the Saturday play like Will Wagner uh, with Joey Votto. I'm uh, just going to say one more thing about him because he probably won't come up nearly as often now that uh, this retire- retirement announcement has come out. Uh, I think he's got to pull a Tom Brady here, honestly. He's got to just uh, pull a fast one. Like when we play the Yankees at the end of this year, uh, hopefully we get Garrett Cole. Joey Votto's coming back for that series. He's getting off his couch. He's launching a baseball and he's going right back into retirement. And that's how we're going to remember Joey Votto. He, he gets one off of Zach Wheeler. Comes back in after not playing in the major leagues for the entire season and just launches one for one off Garrett Cole. And that's it. You retire on top. I'm happy. Blue Jays fans are happy. And just leave it at that. that that's my second point. Um, my third point is, uh, yeah, it's, it's the Los Angeles Angels. Like, this is this is like in, in football, watching the Carolina Panthers play, uh, like, before the Chicago Bears, but when they did not have Caleb Williams. Just it's one of those games that you just, you just don't want to see whatsoever. And there's four of them. There's a four game yeah. series this week. Yeah. So again, uh, you went to Tyler Anderson. That might be a good uh, competitive matchup. Last time the Jays played the Angels, they played the best against Tyler Anderson out of all the pitchers on the weekend. So it's just Toronto Blue Jays. But uh, other than that, yeah, Will Wagner, Joey Votto, and uh, yeah, it's good. I, I was gonna say some bad words about Garrett Cole, but I just I guess I'll just leave it at screw you, Garrett Cole. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you everybody knows that we're not Garrett Cole fans here, Carter. Uh, just going into ball weekend, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more tomorrow, sort of how this shakes up. It's going to be a crazy weekend for us. We'll let you guys sort of in on the behind the scenes a little bit of what goes on. We got a game tonight, Carter, uh, I, as this comes out. We have a Thursday game. I'm at the Manitoba Open Golf Tournaments all day. Um, so that should be a ton of fun. Uh, CGOB is broadcasting from there. And uh, I get to be on site. So it's going to be an absolutely great day. Get, be out in the sun, out on the golf course. Um, Jets forward, or Jets uh, uh, defenseman uh, Dylan Sandberg, I believe, is playing. Uh, so that'll be fun. He'll be out there. Um, and then, yeah, we got a baseball game. We, of course, dropped to the B side. So now we got to fight our way back. First year in three years that we've been in the B side. And I'm not excited for it because now we got to play a lot of terrible teams and try to just craw- claw our way back. But we always say that we're not going to take these episodes very long. Here we are again, 40 minutes. We just we just yap away. Um, but as always, thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow for the Friday episode. Um, and yeah, again, go check out Sully on Locked On MLB. He does a fantastic job. We cannot say it enough on here. He does 
just one of the best jobs with that podcast for covering the entirety of an entire league. He does amazing. Make sure you guys go check that out. Drop a subscription if you're still here on YouTube or if you're listening anywhere else. Go throw us a sub on YouTube anyway. Why not? It helps us out. Yeah, you get to follow us on multiple stuff. Whatever. Have a good Thursday. Watch some Blue Jays baseball. Maybe they'll kick the crap out of the Angels. I don't know. Anyway, take it easy, guys.